Good morning and welcome to Falkirk Vineyard. My name is Nikki and I'm part of the leadership team here at Falkirk Vineyard. And you may have all noticed this morning that we have a special guest with us. The baby Jesus. <laughs> No, we are going to be doing our um, Christmas nativity play this morning, and I've had a bit of a sneak preview, and it's going to be super cute. So if you are here to see a little person at the nativity, an extra special warm welcome. Now, I don't know about you, but today when I opened my number 12 on the advent calendar, I started to panic, and I thought, oh, I've got all these things still to do, and I've not got any food, and I've not got all my presents, and I haven't wrapped anything, but um, this morning, just as we come together, um, and for me especially, um, let's focus on the real meaning of Jesus, of Christmas, which is Jesus, and I have a little quote I'm going to read to you. It says this, the spirit of Christmas needs to be superseded by the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christmas is annual. The spirit of Christ is eternal. The spirit of Christmas is sentimental. The spirit of Christ is supernatural. The spirit of Christmas is a human product. The spirit of Christmas is a divine person. That makes all the difference in the world. Let's worship, shall we? Yeah, morning, guys. Why don't we stand? There's pain within the plan There is victory in the end Your love is my battle cry When my fears like Jericho Build their walls around my soul When my heart is overthrown Your love is my battle cry for all my life and every giant will fall the mountains will move every chain of the past you've broken into where fear over lies we sing in the truth that nothing is impossible The shadows steal the light Your love is my battle cry The anthem for all my life The giant will fall The mountains will move in The fear over lies Sing in the truth Every giant will fall, every giant will fall, the mountains will move, every chain of the past, walk into over fear, over lies, sing in the truth, and nothing is impossible. Oh, 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 o
adopted as your own. Then now our hearts burn with a flame, a fire consuming all for your sons.
a note in key if you can. Just sing your worship out to Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son. We thank you for his birth. We thank you that he came. God, I love that you didn't send him with a fanfare, but Lord, you sent him in humility. You sent him, Lord, in a way that you want us to be. I thank you, Lord, for life that he has given us for those Lord that call upon your name will be saved and it's because of Jesus we love him we love him and we are so thankful for all he's done God I ask that your presence Lord would just hover over us right now as your spirit hovered over the void of this earth and creation and then you brought a creative power and a life Lord to this world that had never seen be- never been seen before and I thank you Lord that's the same power Lord that raised Christ from the dead and that's the same power that lives within us Lord so that we can take the love and the gospel of Christ Lord to Falkirk and beyond 
So Lord, I pray, Lord, as we enjoy this time in your presence, Lord, would you stir us, would you fill our hearts, not just with love for you, Lord, but with love and compassion for others. Because Lord, that's what you've called us to do. That's what you've called us to be. So we pray, Lord, that even as we go into this time now, we're looking forward to seeing our kids do their thing. But God, we still ask your presence be here with us. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for the blessing of worshiping together as your people. Lord, this is so much better to do it together than to do it apart. And Lord, I thank you that we're able to do this. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord, of all glory, honor, and praise. We bless you. Okay, I'm going to hand over to my friend Andrew here. He also plays piano. Give him a round of applause. Okay, here we go. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I think I've been introduced already when I wasn't paying any attention. So um, uh, I'm Andrew. So uh, like Nikki, I'm on the leadership team here at um, Falkirk Vineyard. You guys are in for a treat the nativity this morning it is the kids are so cute and they do a great job of it so um you will enjoy it there's a few quick things we just thought we'd kind of talk you through around uh, what's going on in church um stuff that's coming up between now and christmas and just a couple of other quick things so the first of all it won't have escaped your notice that covid hasn't exactly gone away yet um so just wanted to quickly update you that we are as a church very focused on making sure that all of our risk assessments are where they need to be Keeping you guys safe. You'll have noticed this morning, hopefully you've noticed, there is more sanitization points around the building. We would just encourage you to keep doing that. And can I also encourage you as well, just please make sure you sign in at the front door. It just helps keep us all safe, keeps everybody um, where we need to. But I just wanted to give you that bit of confidence that we are very focused on it and making sure we're doing our absolute best to keep you safe and as secure as we can. So um, this morning, just quick thing on the kids. Um, so what's going to happen is when we finish... Um, the service, the kids are going to go to the back of the room. So when we finish the nativity, they're going to scoot up there, they're going to go to the back of the room, and then they'll be taken away to the kids' area. Um, and at the end of the service, you will pick them back up in the coffee lounge. So the kids' team will bring the kids back to there, so you don't have to go traipsing through. They'll bring them back to there, and you can um, pick, I was going to say pick a kid, no, pick your kid. Um, <laughs> Uh, pick your kid uh, up in the coffee lounge. That would be uh, that would be excellent. Um, also, what we're doing this morning as well is when we finish, um, when Andrew kind of gives us the activity's finished and that's the end of the service. What we'd ask you to do is to kind of hot foot it through into the coffee lounge to give us a chance to set this room up. Now, if you needed bait to hot foot it, there's mince pies. So I was kind of hoping that would be enough of a draw. So if I can ask you to pick up your bags, your coats, all of that sort of stuff to give our host team the best possible chance to get this room cleared and reset in record time so that we can then build the hampers for, um, for Love Falkirk. So lots going on this morning, but if I can ask you to do that, that would be super helpful. Otherwise, Alistair, who's heading host this morning, is six foot two and will just move you. <laughs> so that is, uh, there's your warning. Um, we have also this morning, I'm absolutely delighted. Are you six foot two or are you more? Six foot five. Oh my goodness. It's worse. It's getting worse. He's a nice chap though. Um, right, so um, we have also got our first FE Youth event happening today um, under the leadership of Saren and Gavin. Um, way better than the last boy that was running it. So um, those guys have got an amazing setup for the youth today. So if you are, I've not got any details, I should have, but if you are a young person, age primary seven and up, go and speak to those guys who are standing at the back. They'll give you all the details. I think there is some transport that they can facilitate to their house, and I've heard they've got cracking food on the go as well. So um, final couple of things to say is next week we are, um, if you're enjoying this morning, we've got Two services for you next week. It's good, isn't it? He looks more excited than that. that was, we'll try that again. Two services next week. Hey, there we go. No, actually, it is very exciting. So we've got not a kind of normal service, if you like, here in the morning. And then in the evening at 6 o'clock in the same building here, we will have our carol service. Now, if anyone's not been to the carol service before, it is often considered a highlight of Falkirk Vineyards year. We absolutely love 
the carol service, and we go big. So um, please be there, um, and I believe there will be some tasty treats and some nice stuff to drink. So again, some more bait. Right, we're going to take a very short break to let our kids get organized and then prepare for some cuteness. We'll be back in a second. what they saw on the night that baby Jesus was born. Hey Moon, it's funny how time just flies. Yesterday we were just kids, hanging in the sky, staying up all night. And hey, hey Moon, Never get a tear in your eye When you think about the time that God came down I couldn't help myself I'd stay so bright That newborn baby And the wise men that traveled so far And I know that I was made for a reason I feel like the luckiest star Hey, moon
could see the things we've seen Before the colored lights and the Christmas trees But hey, hey, moon So many are still searching for signs And God is stirring in their hearts And they will lift their wondering eyes And see us shine Great, wasn't it? Why would you just let, give them a big cheer? We'll, we'll hear it. Yay! Uh, we should probably do that every week, eh? It's better. Is that, this other stuff we do each week, nothing compared to that. So, so good. It was great to see. We're well, just like, there's Zach was telling me that's the first nativity that he's not been involved in because he's a big boy now, eh? <laughs> Because she's in youth, and then we had Eloise. That's her first nativity. Because she was before um, before COVID, she was kind of rocking about in her mum's arms, and then we came back after lockdown. She's running about the place, so it's so good just to see them all doing their thing. Um, it really is. And what I love is I look at these kids, and they're being like for them, knowing Jesus is normal, isn't it? It's just like they just, you know, they're. Thank you, parents, for teaching them. Thank you, kids' team, for, for teaching them as well. Um, that Jesus is a reality in their life, and it's just, it's just fantastic. But so, so, so good. So I am literally going to speak for no more than, like, so about five minutes. So it's your lucky day. Uh, just to prove it, one sheet of paper, one sheet of paper. Um, and, yeah, it was just, I'm thinking, you know, we've, we've done an activity, and today as well, we're going to... Um, after I finish speaking, we're going to make up these Christmas hampers um, for people in need in Falkirk. We have a, if you're visiting, it's great to see you today. We have a, I think we call it our compassion ministry. I think that's a, the, what we call it. And it's called Love Falkirk. Um, I was actually thinking back, there's, I'm going to talk about this very briefly, but um, this, that was, th- this compassion ministry, we used to call it Storehouse, was actually our first thing we ever did at Falkirk Vineyard because we kind of, we're doing that before the church existed. Um, and now it's kind of taken arms and legs. Um, during COVID, our food pantry, where we provide food for um, people in really great need that's based in Camlin, um, just went from a low level to a really high level, got really, really busy. Um, and now it's, it's taken a, it's like, a, it's like a, a mind of its own. It's like its own thing. Um, and we have this week, paid for a deposit for our U unit. So um, that we are so we are going to have our own our own owned by us permanent location at Oakle Tree what's it called? Oakle Tree Community Hub, I think it's called. Um, in Camlin. And that is going to be our base for for Love Falkirk from there. Um, and we will that'll be open from January. I think all being well. Well, I'm, looking, I'm, looking, I'm waiting for nods from the people that know better, but January's looking like we're going to be ready. So it's just really good. So this is part of this today. 
um, these hampers that we're going to be making up um, are we we um, we don't just randomly give them out. We are in contact with Falkirk Social Work, um, and they point us in the direction of those that are in greatest need. That's, that, that, that's how we do it. But I just wanted to put a bit of context around it, um, just very briefly about what, why we do this. In Acts chapter two, we get a description of what the early church looked like, and it says this in Acts two. Acts 2, verse 42, sorry. It says this, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Now this is about all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. In, in these verses, we get a description of what the church first looked like. And when I read this, I see that the church was built on two pillars. It was built on worship and compassion. Church is built on worship and compassion. And when we planted this church almost eight years ago, we planted this church on two pillars, worship and compassion. Worship has always been something, uh, in the way we do it, like we did this morning, we've always loved to be expressive in our worship, and we've also loved to be expressive in our, our compassion. And what we're doing today with the hampers, making up the hampers, is... Uh, um, it's an expression of compassion um, in, in one sense. But, you know, compassion isn't just about meeting um, the needs of those who are in need. Compassion goes beyond that. It's interesting how in this passage about the early church, it talks about they sold the property, etc., and shared the money with those in need. But it also said that as, as, a, as a group of believers, they met together in one place and shared everything that they had. So this idea of compassion, isn't it? it's, it's, some of it is like it's internal within the, the church, if you like, but also we express it out the way. In the Oxford English Dictionary, um, my favourite um, theological book, um, the word compassion uh, is described as this. It says compassion is suffering together with another, participation in suffering, and the fellow feeling of sympathy. So you can, work, you can work that out. It also describes it as the feeling or emotion, the feeling or emotion when a person is moved by the suffering or distress of another and by the desire to relieve it. And it also describes it as pity that inclines one to stand by or to support another. What I like about these definitions of compassion is is that they are all outward looking. Compassion is an outward looking act. It's an outward looking emotion. It's an outward looking expression, practically. It's outward looking. And that's what we're, we're doing today. So, so the church is built on worship and it's built on compassion. Worship is, our, um, is directed towards God. We worship together so we can share in that. And compassion is also we direct that towards each other but we also direct it out the way to those that we don't know and those that are not part of our, our fellowship. And I guess a question that we, or a question that I've got, I guess, is say that can we have community without compassion? Can you be a community without compassion? You know, to, to have a community to be gathered, you have to have um, a, a sense of recognition and acknowledgement for other people. Because if not, you're, just, you're on your own. <laughs> Everything's about you. So community, by its very nature, and by its very existence, has to have compassion as part of it. It has a, an outward focus. And then there's another thing, as I was just looking at this in the, the definition in the Oxford English Dictionary, underneath it, I had a, a, another thing that I thought was interesting. It's got a phrase called compassion fatigue. I didn't realize that was a thing. But I say compassion fatigue is described as this, apathy or indifference towards the suffering of others or to charitable causes um, 
attributed to numbingly frequent appeals for assistance, especially donations. And you know, it made me think, like, we, we, we do ask for a lot, don't we? <laughs> we ask for a lot of contribution towards Love Falker. We ask for a lot of donations. We ask for a lot of time from, from people. And I guess if that's in the Oxford English Dictionary, it must be a thing. And I thought, wow, that's a, that's, a, that's a danger, isn't it? That we don't become either apathetic or fed up with doing good, with looking outwards, with the energy that it takes to meet the needs of other people. So we thank God this morning that we've been able to worship him. And we thank him that we're going in a few minutes as we make up these hampers. We're going to be able to express compassion in a practical way. And I guess as I close, my prayer for us, for the church of Jesus Christ worldwide, would be that we would um, accept the mandate from Jesus that the Father gave to him. Luke 4. Luke 4 um, talks about Jesus has gone into the wilderness for 40 days. He's been tempted by, by the devil and, and won. By the way, that's a great victory. That Jesus had a victory over temptation. Um, but he was tempted by the, by the devil for 40 days. He came back to Galilee. And it says this in uh, Luke 4, 14. Jesus returned to Gal- Galilee and he was filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly throughout the whole region. He taught regularly in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. Now this is Jesus reading a prophecy about himself, which in itself is incredible. And he said this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see and that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. If you ever have a notion of compassion fatigue, if you ever think that looking outwards and reaching out to other people is an option, consider then why did Jesus declare that as the first thing about himself when he began his ministry? And if we have the spirit of the Lord on us and in us, if we go by Jesus' words here, then evidence of that would be seen in the proclaiming of good news to the poor, of proclaiming the release of captives, of blind people seeing, of the oppressed being set free, and declaring the favor of the Lord. You see, when I think that this is the essence of compassion. This prophecy, this mandate that the Father gave to the Son is the essence of compassion. We, in, our, in, in, when, in Love Falkirk, we meet many people who support us and help us who would not declare any allegiance to Jesus. They wouldn't call themselves Christian, maybe not even churchgoers, but they are kind, good people. So kindness isn't, the exclusive, uh, isn't exclusive to the church. But what is exclusive to the people of God is the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in us. And when we take human compassion and we merge it together with the power of the spirit of the Lord that we have in us, we can see amazing things happen. And I believe for our town, my heart is that the kingdom of God would come for salvation, but also to bring prosperity to people's lives. And that word prosperity, obviously it gets a bad press, but prosperity is effectively the, the opposite of poverty. Poverty isn't God's idea. God didn't invent poverty. Poverty does not exist in the kingdom of God. So as kingdom people, as hosts of the Holy Spirit, our job, or part of our job, is to remove poverty 
wherever we can, whether that's practically food, financial, spiritual, whatever it is, we want to release people out of poverty. Yeah? yeah. So we thank God that he has commissioned us with the same mandate that he gave Jesus. The spirit of the Lord, if you know Jesus and the spirit of the Lord is on you and you're anointed to bring good news to the poor, you're anointed to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Amen. Amen. Good, why don't we stand... Andrew's giving you the kind of practicalities of what's going to happen now. So we need to clear this room to set up tables to make up the, the hampers. Um, so there's tea and coffee, etc. through in the, the coffee lounge there. And if all goes according to plan, children will be there. So remember to take, take them home. But I just want to pray a blessing over you guys today. Thank you for those that have come visiting to watch your beautiful children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, whatever in this nativity. We love our kids. But if you're able to support us today and help us with these hampers, that would be amazing uh, as well. So God, I just pray, Lord, for I ask that you would send your Holy Spirit right now. I ask, Father, for a fresh anointing of your people. to live out the words and the works of Jesus. I ask, Father, that where we are consumed by ourselves, and God, we confess that we have been over these past couple of years. It's felt necessary to look inward. But God, you designed us and you created us to be an outward-looking people. And Lord, even in our worst moments, we can do something for someone else because the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on us. Yeah, so God, I just pray, Lord, I just pray for a, a sense of your presence and a knowing of your spirit in each one of us. And would you compel us, Lord, not in a just compel us in a loving way, Lord, to look beyond ourselves, to look beyond those that we naturally love, to see and to reach out and to support and bless those that are beyond that. Because, God, that's what you did for us. That's what you did for us. And as we sang this morning that we love you and we worship you. Lord, help us to express that, not just to you in that way, but Lord, to, to others. To express our love for you, Lord, in the way we love other people. So we bless you, Father. Thank you for our kids. Thank you for their cuteness. Thank you for just the, the, the lovely work that has been done by Lindsay and the team. And if you kids, thank you, Lord, for those that have stepped up to the plate to serve and teach them. Pray, Lord, that you'd give them a, an additional blessing today for that. And for these hampers we're going to make up, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would deposit, Lord, a, a, a blessing and, and, and your presence in each one of them so that each home, each family, Lord, that is blessed by these wouldn't just be blessed with food, but, Lord, they'd know your blessing and your presence in their lives and in their homes. So thank you, Father. We bless you, we love you, we honor you, and we give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory that you're due. Amen. Amen. Okay.